America is a great nation, but America needs to reflect on her sins. Who is bold enough, who is strong enough to say to America, you have been wrong for a long, long time? There is an interesting video from Minister Louise Farrakhan about Trump, which I want us to react to. Let's watch this particular video. I will be back. America is a great nation, but America needs to reflect on her sins. Who is bold enough, who is strong enough to say to America, you have been wrong for a long, long time. And it is time now for you to actually see yourself as God sees you, not like the silly woman that looked in the mirror and said, mirror, mirror, on the wall, am I not the fairest of them all? No, you are not. <laughs> so I am here from my teacher, not out of hate, but out of hope that maybe what I say to this 45th President of the United States of America might have an effect to get him off of the course that he is on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Forty years ago, I was awakened from a deep sleep after the so-called death of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. His work destroyed. His name buried. His people back to the old habits that we had once forsaken. And after about 30 months, I decided I must make an effort to rebuild his work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in September of 1977, I decided to rebuild the work of Elijah Muhammad and reprove. Yes, sir to you who had rejected him and to a government that persecuted him, that he had the best solution for the ever growing toxic relationship between black and white. So this message is not from Louis Farrakhan. This message is from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad through Louis Farrakhan. And it is a final warning to the government and people of the United States of America. It is a final call yes, to black people yes, that you must change the way you think and the way you act because the time has arrived for you to do better and be better or suffer the chastisement of God until you submit your will. 
It's written in the Bible, and I say this to our president. It is written that every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus the Christ is Lord. I represent that Jesus, that Christ that you have been longing for and looking for. To my Christian family, you got the right name. You got the right man. In Jesus, but you don't have the right identification. We have to escape the tyranny of white supremacy that is embodied in an image of Jesus that is not Jesus. If Jesus were in fact a white man, we would have no problem bowing to his greatness and majesty, righteousness, because that's the way he's styled in the Bible as well as in the Quran. But the travesty is he was not a white man. You say, what difference does it make? It must have made a difference to you to take him out of his color. So that we would be worshiping your flesh as a Caucasian. Never summoning the courage to check you in your wrong. Stand up against you in your evil. And force you to do better as a people toward us. So today, God has come. And he has raised up a Jesus. The Jesus that Jesus the prophet was a sign of. Jesus the prophet who lived 2,000 years ago was a righteous servant of God. He is dead like all the prophets that lived before him. But Jesus prefigured one that would come in the last days of this world who would be Jesus, the Messiah, son of Mary. I know that you have these images and you believe you're truly following Jesus. Jesus was not an unrighteous man. How could you be a follower of his doing the evil that you do to people that you made Christians? We didn't come here as Christians. We became Christians under your tutelage. You were careful not to let us read the full book, the full gospel. You wanted religion to make us a better tool of service. Jesus never knew anything about a cross. 
The symbol of the early Christians was a fish. So when Jesus met Peter, Peter was fishing. And Jesus said unto him, come and follow me. And I will make you a fisher of men. Taking people out of a murky sea of filth and evil and indecency and transforming their lives in their discipleship of him. To the members of the Jewish community, Louis Farrakhan is not your enemy. You act as though it is sin to critique you. How can you be better than what you are to escape the judgment of God if someone does not stand up with strength and criticize your misbehavior in the name of God? That's a great act of love. Every Jewish mother is honored and loved because a Jewish mother chastens her children with love and guides them to the greatness that they have manifested on this earth. So when you sing the song, My Yiddish Mama, you know how to honor your mother fulfilling the command of God. Honor your mother and father that your days may be long. Well, as a member of the press, you may say, hey, hey, hey I didn't come here to hear no preaching, Farrakhan. <laughs> well, this is just um, what I would call um, the prologue. Mr. Trump is an anomaly. He's someone that doesn't fit the norm. You expected a man to be like the other presidents. You wanted him to be more presidential. He's so transparent. You wanted him to put on a suit and act dignified. Come on. Like the thieves and robbers that dress in suits and tell lies. You wanted him to be like that. He's telling lies all right. And you're angry because he's your reflection. He's an anomaly. You can't make him what you desire him to be so that you can say, oh, that's my president. He wasn't made that way. God has him here. What did you say, Farrakhan? Do you think that God is not interested in who is president of the United States of America? Especially when it's out of the time of evil? It's in our time now? 
you Muslims who are present in the Quran God and Satan are having a talk and God is saying to Satan uh, I've judged you to be erring Satan know he's wrong <laughs> any devil knows they're wrong So God said to Satan, as Satan asked him, respite me, delay my doom. Because Satan was doomed from the day he was made. And God said to him, surely you are of the respited ones. And Satan responded to God by saying, I'm going to come after them in your straight path. I'm going to come to them from their right, from their left, from before them and behind them. I'm going to make them all to deviate. Did you notice that President Trump got in an argument with the Pope? Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. <laughs> what kind of man is he? <laughs> that he would argue with a man that every president of the United States would go to Rome and kiss the ring. but not Donald Trump. <laughs> Have you considered these things? <laughs> the Pope said, well, he, he's wrong because he's building walls and instead of bridges. That's a nice thing for you to say, Pope Francis, because there's a wall that you all have built that walls you off from the poor and the destitute, how could you say he's wrong for building a wall when Nicholas V, a predecessor, signed a papal bull giving the kings of Portugal and Spain the right to come into the Western Hemisphere and take the resources of the indigenous people and if they would not convert, kill them. Yes, then wall them off in a reservation. Wall us off under segregation. Wall our people off in South Africa under apartheid. You've been building walls, not bridges. So President Trump called that a form of hypocrisy. You have no right to condemn him, he said for building a wall or telling him he's not a Christian? Suppose I told you that you are not Christian. How could you be? 2,000 cases of pedophilia before the Vatican? How could you be? But we don't have the right to say to you, sit down. But Christ yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. has that authority. Yes, sir. No masquerading in his name. The masquerade is over.
So when I decided to rebuild the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I went around in Chicago and asked for the blessings of black leaders and opinion makers and pastors. I got the blessings of John Johnson, of Ebony and Jed. I, I got the blessing of Father George Clements and Father Flager. I got the blessing of Lou and Georgia Palmer. I got the blessing of black people who meant something to black people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when it was heard this month, 40 years ago, on Cottage Grove Avenue at the Institute of Positive Education under the guidance of Haki Madhubuti that I was going to rebuild his work. Some of my brothers who once followed Elijah Muhammad were talking about taking my life. So one of my friends, uh, Ronaldo Glover, who is a lawyer and is the, was the husband of Sanji, formerly known as Sanji Clay, the first wife of uh, Muhammad Ali. I met in their home with Al Reynolds and Glover, and they were trying to help me get started. But Glover was a partner in a law firm downtown called Isham Lincoln and Beale under the former governor of the state of Illinois, Governor Ogilvy. So they brought me to Governor Ogilvy, who I think it was uh, Nixon wanted to make him head of the FBI. He turned it down. And Glover said to Governor Ogilvy, Farrakhan is trying to rebuild the work of his teacher and there's talk about assassinating him. What would you advise him to do? Governor Ogilvy looked at me and said to Farrakhan, I would stay in the public. Keep on speaking and getting people around you. That would make it more difficult for you to be assassinated. I thanked the governor and went home to my humble abode, my poor wife and family, and nervous about what their husband and father was trying to do. Hmm. And I sat down in a chair. I had a refrigerator at that time that had a push button door. You pushed the button and the door would open and the refrigerator looked brand new because there was nothing in it. It's true. And so I started thinking on my teacher. And this is who I want to <coughs> represent to President Trump today because my teacher, a messenger of God and Messiah, was so wise that he could teach me in a crowd and nobody would know what he's saying, but he's saying it to me, and I wouldn't know what he was saying. But the seed was planted. Let me give you an example. I was sitting with him one day, and he's carrying on a conversation with his laborers. And then he looks at me and said, brother, when a seed germinates in the earth, it sends a root down 
long before it sends the shoot up. And he went right on talking. <laughs> so after I left Governor Ogilvy, I went home and in the quiet of a room, his words came back to me. Go underground and work without being seen. And for seven long years, I went underground. And I didn't surface until Reverend Jackson wanted to run to be president and ask me to come by his side. He said, Farrakhan, you can't deny the people what you know. Speak. And I have to tell you, it was Reverend Jackson that brought me out of hibernation. <laughs> and my first interview was with a young lady named Jamie Gangel. I think she was an NBC reporter. She asked me questions, I gave her straight answers. And then Jesse got in trouble. You know the history. I'm just touching it. Because it leads to what I'm going to say in detail to President Trump. I never knew anything about relationships with the Jewish community. Nothing. They hired me to sing or dance or play. I did that. I went to their homes and I, I ate chopped liver. I, <laughs> And I admire Jewish people to this day. Yes, because without the Jewish people, civilization would not have advanced to where it is. Nobody can take that away from them. But there are righteous Jews, good Jews, Jews that want to practice the teachings of the prophets. But then there are others who don't wish to practice. And it is they that hated Reverend Jackson's desire to be president. He had shook hands with Arafat, sin. I don't understand you people that the president can go and meet with his enemies. But if we meet with one of your enemies, who's not our enemy, all of a sudden we are anti-Semitic. Every black man of consequence yes, was called an anti-Semite. Right. Why do you use that? When these people don't hate Jews, but they may criticize some aspect of your behavior that disadvantages them. And if they do, you punish them. So that was Minister Louis Farrakhan. So this is a very long video which I will have to bring to you in episodes. So if you really want to watch the full video then you have to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button so that anytime I upload the next episode you are going to get your notification to be able to watch if you also want to 
join us on our telegram page then go to my description box and click on the telegram link and join us as we discuss about the well-being of africa and africans in diaspora i am always your guy digrafts thanks for watching